Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yea. Hosanna. 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 In the highest. Well, welcome to worship. Happy Palm Sunday. I felt like I could put myself back in the pews and waving my palms, and I hope you did too. And next year, next year we'll be able to do it together for sure. But welcome to worship, whether you're waving palms or not even sure what palms have to do with church today. We are so glad that you are here, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. You are welcome here. Before we begin with our opening prayer, I wanna give you a couple of announcements. One is mostly a mark your calendar. On Tuesday, April 20th from six, at 6.30 p.m., I think it goes till eight, um, Clout, Citizens of Louisville, Organized and United Together, I may have the tenses of those verbs wrong, but um, 
Anyway, this is the uh, social justice organizing group that our church is part of, and they're having their Nehemiah Assembly. This is the annual event where uh, we gather as many people as we can, usually in Memorial Hall. This time, it's going to be virtual, uh, but the, the leaders are going to be in a studio, and they're going to have uh, TVs with all of our faces around. So we'll still be able to be there as a large presence. And so we still need faces on the screen. So that will be April 20th, uh, 6.30 p.m. You can do it from your home. It's such a great way to do social justice from your home. And we will be addressing the um, issues uh, that Clout is focusing on, including equity in law enforcement, um, support for senior citizens to age well in their own homes, restorative practices in the schools rather than punitive practices, and affordable housing. And we will need your face to help support those things. So go ahead, just save the date on your calendar. We'll get more details to you after Easter. Speaking of Easter, we've got some Holy Week activities coming up. This is the week. It begins with Palm Sunday. We are going to have virtual options for every part of Holy Week. So you will have the ability to participate from your home. But we also, this time, have a few in-person opportunities as well. So uh, you will have a Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. right here on Zoom. Good Friday is going to be a video that we're going to upload to uh, Facebook and YouTube that you can watch anytime you want to have your Good Friday service on uh, on Friday, and I hope that you'll be intentional about choosing a time that you can be reflective for that. And then Saturday or Friday night, the youth have an in-person um, uh, glow-in-the-dark Easter egg hunt at Bethany UCC, so they can get information from Samantha. Um, also on Friday, we are going to have the sanctuary open for a prayers, uh, a prayer station walkthrough. So it's not quite a service, but it will be a very meditative thing in, in the sanctuary. And I will be here for pastoral prayer um, from uh, 10 to 2 on Friday and 6 to 8 on Friday for those of you for whom evening is better. So we're going to have the sanctuary open. You can uh, feel the holiness of this space, even if we're not having a big service together. Sunday morning, Easter morning, we are going to celebrate in the garden. We're going to be at Depre Park, that's D-E-S-P-R-E-S, -E -E Depre Park on Low Road. Uh, there's a pavilion there in case of bad weather, but we'll be gathered out in nature, um, just in the way that uh, Mary saw Jesus the first time after resurrection. So if you are able and willing, we hope that you will come to our in-person Easter service. Please wear a mask. We're going to try to keep social distance. We're going to try to follow all the precautions. We will also have the little um, communion cups. So we'll have a small communion there as well. And we will have our big virtual shebang uh, at 1045 right here on this link for Easter. So it's a lot going on, but it is the holiest of weeks and it is a week filled with hope as we continue to find new life appearing in many places. One of the things we still need to prepare is Easter egg candy. If you are the candy buying type, you could drop some off at the church uh, during opening hours, Monday through Wednesday. We need it by Wednesday. And or you can send money to uh, the youth um, or you can send money to the church and let Samantha know that you did. Uh, so she knows kind of how much she has to spend. Little Pantry also has a few needs. You can check out our wish list uh, in the link that is in your email and probably Samantha's gonna cut and paste it on here. Bible study will return as an in-person Bible study on April 15th. We're gonna skip the week after Easter because uh, Pastor Rachel's going on vacation. <laughs> but then we will join back together on April 15th. Happy hour is still on this holy week. So uh, come and join us there. And if you have the sea glass pendant that we made last week, have it with you for the service today because we have one last thing to do with our sea glass. 
Okay, that's a lot to know because it's a big important week. But let's now center ourselves into a time of thinking and praying with God. We've seen that the stories of Jesus's healing ministry are filled with words and deeds. And this is one of the big ones. When, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the people had hopes that he would heal the oppressive systems that they were living under. We know that his healing was not confined to that moment in history, but offers a new way of life that has made a case for compassion for all, especially the least ever since. As we head into Holy Week, we begin to see that our ability to forgive ourselves and others is the foundation that can transform infirmities and allow us to move on. We integrate our beliefs and actions for the health of the whole. And the parade of compassionate power that we celebrate today symbolizes our ability to build a new road to recovery. We glorify God for beautiful words and works of wholeness and share that beauty with others. We know that there will still be pain, but we also know that love will win. And so as we sing our song of prayer this morning, I invite you to think about a hurt that you have. Any hurt will do. And imagine compassion flowing into that hurt, like a healing salve. Compassion for yourself, compassion for all those involved. Envision that as we sing and pray together. approached our time of confession each week in Lent in such a way that we lay bare brokenness in order to begin the process of healing. Along the way, we've acknowledged our need to restore our own holy vessels while attending to our role in the healing of the community and the world. The work of healing will continue as we integrate all that we have learned with all that we will do moving forward. For now, we remember how hard it is to move from thinking to doing. So let us pray. Forgiving God. We have opened ourselves to healing and sometimes it is easier to pray nice prayers than to do the hard work of putting into action what needs to happen. Help us remember the sacred nature of the holy vessels that we are fragile and susceptible to shattering, yet capable of transformation. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to believe in our ability to change and heal as you believe in us. Help us healer, show us our strength, forgive our inertia, move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. 
In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our need for wholeness. I invite you to return to that warm orb of light we've been talking about through Lent that lives within you. It may already be a glow with excitement of waving the palms, the presence of Jesus leading us on. But if you are struggling, or if you have struggled in this season of recovery, to feel the warmth of that assurance within you, don't despair. You are not the one who has to create the light. It just is. And it is a pilot light that never goes out. You will at some time begin to notice it returning to your awareness. Know this, you are never alone in the struggle, no matter what. Jesus is on the journey with us. Life's parade is not passing you by. You are part of this body of Christ, a community seeking healing for you, for me, for all. Take a breath and let that truth fill you. Breathe out with the relief of assurance. I invite you to imagine that warmth now extending from you to your household, to your neighborhood, to your community, to your church. It is the way that we are passing this peace of Christ, letting it spread like the rising of the sun, expanding to the world. This is the peace of Christ. Even in times that we are broken, we each still have gifts to give. As people of faith, we respond to the gift of life from our creator by sharing our gifts with God's creation. Our Lenten offering for this season is designated for the Americana, Americana Center, which helps uh, new refugees and other people new to Louisville uh, from other countries. And I had a chance to talk to the executive director, uh, Eduardo uh, Mancia of the Americana Center. Um, and we were able to share with him some of the vaccination appointments that we had uh, available to us through the vaccine clinic from UofL. And they were so grateful to receive this opportunity to uh, get their people vaccinated. And it's just one of the many ways that we're able to be in partnership with people, even in virtual ways. If you'd like to give to that Lenten offering for the Americana Center and or our general fund, please go to our website, emmanuelucc.info and click donate. And there you can choose the Lenten offering fund or the general fund. Or if you prefer paper, you can also mail in a check, it still works. Let us pray. As you imagine whatever offering it is that you have to give, whether it's financial or time or talent, whatever it is, imagine it here on the altar with these wonderful palms as we pray. God, whose praises we sing, we lay down before you our best offerings, our palms, our coats, our hard earned money. Our prayer is that they will pave the way for your new road of compassion and grace. May your creative spirit multiply these gifts, O oh God, with abundance, that they will spread love and joy throughout your creation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's sing together in gratitude. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures there below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. 
legs fall out on mute. So my ears won't stay up, but I'm a donkey. I'm not a bunny. I'm a donkey. Next week, we might be a, a, a bunny. But I tried to get one of my parents donkeys, but they wouldn't get in my car. I don't understand why. So I had to be the donkey and wave my branches because you all are here to wave them for me today. So me and Rachel were waving our little branches this morning and we missed you all because normally that's all of our kids' job is to run around the sanctuary and wave them real high, right? And then lay them up on the altar. And I love that part because... First of all, I just love kids, obviously. And I love that it's excitement. And who doesn't love a parade, right? And who doesn't love a donkey? Aren't they adorable? Like, they're super cute, right? I think they're super cute. But so you're probably thinking, Samantha, why are you wearing a donkey hat and you're waving prom branches like you're five again? Well, first of all, I'm always a child of God. So I always get to act like a kid sometimes. And I get to work with you all, which young and old, we all are silly, right? We all get to have happy moments and, and have fun and laugh. And I know it's been a hard year for that. Sometimes it didn't feel like we wanted to laugh because so many other things were going on that were bad. And sometimes you felt bad for having a good time. But you know what this week tells us? This week is a, it's called Holy Week. And it starts with Palm Sunday today, where we've got a big celebration and we've got parades. We've got people waving branches, putting cloaks down so Jesus can come walking in on a donkey. Right? A big parade. Fun, excitement. It's a good time. Everybody's very excited going into Jerusalem. Well, the end of the week changes a whole lot. We go from having a party and a celebration and a parade to killing of Jesus because people didn't like him because people didn't like what he was telling everybody to be nice to everybody and to love all the people. And that God told them not to judge each other. None, nobody liked that back then. And you know what? Jesus knew on Palm Sunday, when he told the disciples to go get that donkey, he still knew how the week was going to end. And he did the parade anyway. He knew it wasn't going to be a great week. It's going to have its ups and downs, obviously. But he still took the time to have that parade. Still took the time to be in the moment and be happy. Even though he knew what was ahead of him wasn't all that wonderful. And I think that's a good lesson to learn that sometimes we know there's things ahead of us or things that are going around, around us that aren't great and that hurt us, and that are going to make us angry and sad. But that doesn't mean we can't celebrate every little thing that we possibly can. Every little flower that blooms outside, you can smile. You can get excited about. You can plant more flowers like I tried to this weekend. And you can do all those things because even Jesus did. Jesus knew the end of the week was going to happen, but Jesus also had another little smart brain up here that said he knew it was going to happen after Friday. What's going to happen next Sunday? Now you have to come back next Sunday to figure that out if you don't know. But he knew a little bit ahead of time that in the end, it's going to be okay because God's got us. So even though there's going to be ups and downs like Holy Week that are going to go from a parade to a funeral, it's going to be okay. And that in all of those times, we can be happy, we can be sad, we can experience the emotions and the feelings that we have for all those things. So what I hope you do this week is that your families talk about Palm Sunday and Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, and maybe you come into church on Good Friday and do our prayer stations. They're for kids too. They're all ages. Everyone can do them. And you all get to experience the kind of roller coaster ride of Holy Week, but you get to be in every single moment of it. Because if you do that, Next Sunday is so amazing if you experience all those emotions. And then next Sunday will just be out of this world party, basically. So I hope you all continue to do that. And I hope that also tells you that even though there might be uh, not great things happening all the time in your life, that you still get to take the moment and celebrate every single little thing that you can. And that includes adults getting out of bed and going outside or doing anything. I'm okay with that, especially when it's not pretty weather outside and it rains all the time. As our Miss Etta tells us, go stomp in some puddles because it makes you feel better. She's a very smart little one, I'm just saying. So let's all pray that we can make it through this roller coaster of a week, but also that 
again, we have all these emotions that we get to have and they make our life better. And even Jesus knew that there was times to just be silly, hop on a donkey and have a parade. So let's pray with me, please. Dear God, thank you for all the highs and lows of our life. Thank you for the parades and the celebrations. And thank you for the sad times too. Because in the sad times, we can feel you even more present than we can in other times. And let us always remember that we are your kids no matter what. So we get to be silly and we get to be happy and we get to do crazy things sometimes that just make us smile. And remind us that smiling and laughing are good things or you wouldn't make our bodies be able to do them. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Our special music today is a gift from another congregation, St. John's UCC in Indianapolis. Um, put together with the help uh, from also, a, an, it's an ecumenical collaboration because Glenwood Lutheran Church in Toledo somehow helped them with this. Uh, and because of virtual worship, we get to share in it too. So uh, they have prepared for us, uh, Jesus is coming, a beautiful celebration for Palm Sunday. Jesus is coming, make the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Jesus is coming, make the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. So our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Mark, and it is his version of the procession and parade that we know of as Palm Sunday. That's going to be read to us by Janae Clark. Today's biblical text is from Mark 11, 1 through 11, New Revised Standard Version. 
When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you why you are doing this, just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Janae. Friends, let us pray. God, as we meet you with our best intentions, we shout, Hosanna. Turn our shouts and hopes into your love, God. May the word of, our, of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've been thinking a lot about palms this week, palm branches, and I realized that they are sort of a character in the story that we don't really talk about. We wave them around a lot, but I never really thought too much about what they signify and what they mean. And they have pretty important meaning in this story. It was the culture and the tradition of the time and especially of Jerusalem that when a victor in a battle or a king or someone of great dignitary uh, status would come into Jerusalem, there would be a parade and there would be you know, the generals uh, returning from victory that would be celebrated with something called the triumphus, a grand procession where they would be crowned with laurels and they would be mounted on a grand armored war horse or ride a chariot pulled by white horses. And they would proceed into the temple with all the fanfare and they would offer their sacrifices into the temple. And along the way, the crowds would sing hymns and shout acclamations to the victor. And they would lay down branches and coats and anything they could find to prepare the way because roads were dusty and you didn't want any dust to go on your victor or your king. And they didn't want them to sully the purity of the white horse's hair. And so it was a mark of honor and a mark of sacrifice to the victor to lay down those branches and those coats. Pilate, we assume, came in in one of these parades just about the same time that Jesus was coming in on the other side of the city. He would have come from the other side and he would have come with great fanfare and military might because Passover was a big celebration. There were lots of people coming and so they were all hands on deck. They wanted to make sure that there were no problems. And so the military presence was very high in uh, Jerusalem and it would have been a great show of might as Pilate came in because he didn't usually live in We were talking about uh, Pilate coming in. He would have come in on one of these Roman roads. 
And you know that Romans were famous for their roads. The way that they built them, they were wide and big with great drainage. They were feats of engineering. And the way that they united the empire was to build wide, straight roads all over. They built about 50,000 miles of these suckers. And some of them lasted as major roads even through the Middle Ages, and portions of them are still existent today. They were great engineering feats. And while they benefited things like trade, they were not exactly meant for trade. They were meant for military conquest. They were meant to make sure that these parades of chariots could come in whenever it was needed and conquer whatever uh, mischievous person or people were uh, messing up. And so at Passover, when Jewish people are coming from all over Israel to celebrate this festival of liberation, this festival of being released from oppression, you may remember that the current Jews in this story were being oppressed pretty actively by the Romans. So they're coming to celebrate a festival of release from oppression. So you better believe Pilate came in with all the armies ready to just make sure that they had all of their peacekeeping forces in place. And so all of this like military might is happening and that is the culture of the time. Good thing things have totally changed now, of course. But all of this military show was happening while Jesus was doing his other version of a parade on the other side of town, coming in from the Mount of Olives, the mountain from which prophets were supposed to come. And he's riding a donkey, not a chariot. He will be crowned with thorns, not laurels. He will weep over Jerusalem, not celebrate it. And instead of making a sacrifice at the temple in the way that people were used to, he will drive out the oppressive sacrificial system in the temple and he himself will become the sacrifice. And so this statement of the crowds putting their palms on the ground is a recognition of those crowds saying, this is the kind of savior that we need. We often give the crowds a bad rap. You know, they're thinking, oh, here's a military victor. And then they all run away when things get hard. But I had this thought this week of like, maybe they knew what they were doing. You know, we, we often cast them as these mistaken people. But what if they were in on the joke? What if they knew that the Christ that they were worshiping was the opposite of the military victor? What if the branches that they offered to this humble king were a recognition of this new way of being, of honoring not the power of war and might, but the power of compassion and sacrifice and inclusion of the excluded? What if they were paving a new road? Not the Roman conquest road, but a new road for a new kind of healing power in the world. Maybe the crowds hailing Jesus knew of him as the victor, not of the military, not of the Roman Empire, but of death itself. They were putting their trust in him as the great way, the road to salvation. And whether or not they knew it would not be a military victory, they knew it would be a healing victory. Their palm branches were paving a road for the power of compassion to come through, a road for God to be with and for the people, to love them into healing. We've talked about healing now for the last six weeks, healing in our bodies, our community, our emotions, our creativity, and our environment. Today, we talk about integrated healing, the power that God has to heal all together in body, mind, soul, community, and world. What we will see from Jesus this week is that it takes everything we've got, plus the power of the God of compassion 
strength, and grace. But healing is the goal. Resurrection is the ultimate healing. This week, a podcast of Krista Tippett's show On Being came out with an interview with Christine Runyon, who is a trauma psychologist who usually works with healthcare workers, and people on the front lines. And she explained what's been happening in our nervous systems this year in a way that I felt was really helpful. She said that we've been in a fight, flight, or freeze mode, something that's only supposed to last a few minutes or maybe a few hours biologically. We've been in that mode for a year. Our adrenaline is constantly being spiked. Our processing from our thinking brains shuts down in order to put the energy into our muscles for running away from danger. But the danger has not been a tiger about to pounce on us. The danger has been an invisible thing all around us, even in our closest loved ones, potentially. Ready to pounce on the slightest sign of weakness, the slippage of a mask below a nose. This constant hypervigilance has created a collective trauma. Our nervous systems are fried. Now, when we need energy and creativity to figure out a new normal, we are stuck in our lizard brains, our sympathetic nervous system, and we are reactive rather than creative. Runyon says that in our biological makeup, when the threat subsides or when our thinking brain, our prefrontal cortex, sends a message that, okay, we've absolved the threat or we've just imagined the threat, the parasympathetic nervous system can then calm things down and bring things back to baseline. And that, Runyon says, is where we are the most integrated and created, creative and aligned with ourselves. And we have present moment awareness. And that is our most natural balance of our nervous system. But most of us are reduced and kind of stuck in either freeze mode or fight mode. We're overwhelmed and exhausted or we're lashing out at every possible thing, assuming that it's a threat without being able to evaluate. The first thing Runyon does is offer compassion for this. She says, whoever you are, whatever you're feeling, of course, of course you are feeling that. Look at our current conditions. And it's a normal response to incredibly unfamiliar, unusual, unpredictable, uncontrollable circumstances. One of the ways that we experience this constant stress is through what she says is a massive loss of empathy for everyone else. So we have to start with compassion for ourselves so that we can offer compassion to others. She offers some really practical advice for that. There's a breathing exercise in your uh, spotlight that you got this week in your email that can lead you through a breathing exercise. She also says, name, name the pain, name what's going on, find someone to talk with about it and recognize that it's a natural human response. Another tool is to be curious. Why do you feel angry? What is triggering your tiredness? Being curious moves those feelings back up into your prefrontal cortex rather than staying stuck in that lizard brain. She recommends using your senses. Have comforting music or smells around. Have soft things to touch. Feel your feet supported by the floor. Senses will bring you back into your thinking brain and help with that sense of feeling threatened. And finally, compassion for yourself, for others, for everyone you encounter. Compassion supersedes all of these tips. The revelation for me this Palm Sunday has been that Jesus represents the power of compassion and empathy to overpower even the greatest military might, even our own lizard brains. When we wave our branches, our our green raincoats or whatever it was that you waved and shout, Hosanna, save us. We are putting our faith not in might, but in humility, not in force, but in invitation. 
not in overpowering, but generosity, not in judgment, but compassion. Some of us may abandon this when the going gets tough. If you trust the story, most of us will abandon this when the going gets tough, when fear and worries about scarcity take over. But Jesus keeps calling us back, willing to sacrifice everything to prove the power of love as the ultimate healing power. Jesus pulls us out of fear and fight and flight into a calmer sense of love, forgiveness, grace, and healing. So wave those palms. Declare to all the threats, we are not afraid. We have love for ourselves and love for you too. Hosanna. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Hosanna to the Prince of Peace. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was a sign to the people that they were worthy of being saved, meaning the, the cries of Hosanna, save us, were being answered. Now the saving they expected may not have been what they got, but it was what they needed the grace of compassion and love. Similarly, healing is not always an absence of illness, but rather a trust that God is holding our brokenness and we can move on in life with assurance, making beauty in the hard times. Last week, we wrapped our pieces of sea glass in wire. Uh, some of us may have taken a while to manage this feat. And it was a reminder that God restores us to life, wrapping and holding us even in our brokenness, making us into a beautiful gem. This week, you're invited to give this away to someone else who might need it. As you look back on this season of focusing on healing, what is it that you learned that you would like to give away to others? through your words and actions. Take a moment to think on this and when you are ready, enclose the piece of glass in your hand and hold it to your heart. Invite that spirit to show you your next steps in furthering the healing of your corner of the world. Keep your eyes open this week for the right moment, the right person, to receive this gift of beauty from brokenness that you have made. We're gonna close with prayer and I invite you to share in the chat those things that are close to your heart that you would like for us to lift up in prayer. healer of our every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust that sorrow will end, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that you are already at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities of grief in our time. Even when we cannot seem to believe it, we know that you see beauty in our brokenness. We pray especially for those who feel that the only way to have power is to take it away from others. May they know the compassion of your new road. When we are tempted to tra trample on others in order to find salvation in something other than your grace, save us, God. Help us be those who offer hope when we have the opportunity on this parade of compassion called life. With humility and gratitude, O oh God, we lift now those in our hearts who need your special care. Florence, Doris, Michael, Meg and baby Bo, Sherry, Vicki, Dennis and Joy, Ashley's family, 
a fractured family. Leanne, victims of gun violence in Atlanta and Boulder and Virginia Beach, Panama City, and Louisville, Ari's family, and so many others. And an end to the belief that guns, guns will save us rather than the compassion shown by Jesus. Buzz as he grieves. Frank, recovering from foot surgery. Tanner, recovering from foot surgery. For those in nursing homes and senior facilities, Jane, Mary Ellen, Betty, Julia, Bill, and Gail, those who are suffering with COVID and other illnesses, those who are in prisons, who are in financial impossibilities, the Asian American community, the families of all who grieve, and those who are sick physically, mentally, and spiritually, those who are lonely, and those who are called to be our leaders, that they may develop plans that will help us all for those who are weary. God, you know that there are other prayers too deep for words in our hearts, but you know them. And so we lift them to you and hold them all in our hearts as we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray to you, our creator, our mother, and our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, before we close with our hymn and postlude, know this. Go with the confidence that God is making us whole and holy, paving a way of love for all and for joy in the living of this world. And may the spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Go in peace. And may the Lord go with you as Grace Notes will sing and will close with all glory, laud, and honor. And behold, the King rides forth. <laughs>